This weekend post, pastel colors and a bit of punch for a seascape photo. Hi everyone, I'm Scott Davenport. Welcome to In Post. Today we're going to explore a bit of a pastel color palette for this seascape. If you saw in the field earlier this week, you saw a certain composition I was working. It was a nice calm morning and the uh, general color tones in the location were of a softer pastel type feel. So I'm going to go with that in the processing. So let's have a look here. This is the photo straight out of the camera in Lightroom and I'm um, in the the before view here. We'll go through a couple of snapshots that I took as I processed this in Lightroom. So I'm going to turn off the before preview. And so this is just the corrections and the crop. So you can see the, the horizons straight now. We don't have that vignetting at the corners. Next was basic adjustments. So let's hit that one there and see what we have. So um, I did not do anything with the white balance. Didn't touch that at all. Increased exposure about halfway, and the, the histogram showed that I was a little underexposed. And this is the kind of scene where our uh, meters in our camera can sometimes get fooled because they're measuring reflected light and with a, a brighter sky out there. The foreground was a little dark, and that's what happened in this shot. And from there, did normal things. Adjusted white and black point using the, uh, the option click. So if I hold down option or alt and then I adjust the slider, you can see that tiny bit of clipping over in the lower left corner of the preview area. To uh, get the dark black, same thing for whites. Pulled just shy of having the clouds blow out here. And then pulled the highlights down quite a bit so I got some of that detail back up in the sky. Added a touch of clarity and vibrance and saturation. And so if I were to reset all of those guys, we can see that's before and that's after. So we're starting to bring out the color tones here. This isn't where we go into the pastel world. That's going to happen in the HSL, Hue, Saturation, and Illuminance panel. So let's take a look at that. That's our next snapshot, actually. Hit that, and let me open up the panel there. You can see what we did here. So um, Primarily, the, the, the pastel stuff happens with the hue. And if you see the blues I've taken toward aqua. So if I reset the blues for a moment, I'll double click on that. You'll see it's a much bluer, bluish green tone in here. Undo that change, shifting more toward that aqua tone. And that's softening things up and brightening things up. From there, I was just playing around with saturation a little bit. So increasing the colors in the blue areas. And a little bit in the reds, that's for the sky up in here. And uh, luminance, I did tug down on the, the purples and the reds. I was using this, you know, this little uh, two-headed arrow thing, and you kind of float around in these areas, and you end up in tones where sometimes you get multiple channels selected, and you drag up and down to adjust these sliders. Now, once I reached this point in Lightroom, I still wanted to do more. I like the color tones. The color's nice, but I want more punch. And nothing does punch better than dynamic contrast in On One Effects. So that's what I did next. I'm going to send this photo over into On One Effects. So righty clicky and Effects 2017. We'll bring that in. I'll see you on the other side. All right, made it over to Effects with no fanfare, really. And I added three filters you can see here. Let's work our way from the bottom up. So I want a dynamic contrast. That was the big thing here. And so I'm going to turn that on. You're going to see the rocks punch up and some of the water. Now, how did I achieve this look? If you, you know, paying really close attention, you notice the mask that is in the little tiny window over here, this guy here, that's pretty darn elaborate. I'm going to press the O key. And this is what the mask looks like. So there's a lot going on here. And I didn't paint this all in by hand. Uh, I'm going to see about recreating this at least closely to this form here. But I'll show you the steps. And just so I can return to the mask that I'm happy with, I'm going to copy that mask and just save it off there. So let me open this up and reset it. So this is what Dynamic Contrast did right out of the shoot. And I had cranked this up pretty high. Didn't start there. I started with Natural. And this was this was tamer, but I really just want the rocks to pop and some of the water. So I began with a luminosity mask. So I'm going to create a luminosity mask. Now what that does is it reads the tone of the image, and darker tones get a black mask. The effect is hidden, and brighter tones get a white mask. The effect is shown, and everything in between gets hidden or shown by some 
you know, a varying degree of all or nothing. So if I press the O key again, this looks like a black and white photo. This is the mask. This is not a black and white treatment. This is we're looking at the mask. This is exactly the opposite of what I want. I want the darker rocks to get the dynamic contrast. So if you know, I toggle this off and on, you're going to see much more change in the water and the sky and not so much in the rocks. Well, we can invert that. Great. Now I've handled getting the rocks to have the pop and not so much the water. And this is where I went into the sliders and pushed those up even farther and then reached for a masking brush, right? I can still do masking. It's just a mask. Even though I used luminosity mask to create it, I can do whatever I want with it. And so that's exactly what I did. I grabbed masking brush. I took the opacity down to uh, kind of in, in this neighborhood, like in the 40-ish the percent range. Made a very big brush and make that kind of like this and just started removing some of the effect. And so I just brushed all the way through the entire scene. And so this is taking everything away. Okay. But it's um, kind of subtractive. So I'm going to press, this is a little bit sloppy, but let me press the O key again. And I, I missed a couple of spots there. But you can see now that the effect on the rocks is subdued some. You know, so if I undo that, redo it. Everything is just, you know, kind of toned down. Now I could do this with the opacity slider as well. And in retrospect, that would have been easier. This opacity slider right here, I could have just taken that down by 40%. As a matter of fact, let's just kind of do that. Let's just, you know, knock it down a little bit. And we don't see a change on the mask. If I turn the mask off, we see a change in the effect, right? On, off, and it's dimming over there in the, in the, the water areas. The next step I did, same idea, using a lower opacity, I did that down about 25, and then just swept through in the channels of water to further reduce the amount of dynamic contrast. And again, I'm doing this kind of sloppy. I did not use edge detection for this. It does not have to be a, a perfect mask. This is really, I'm, I'm doing some accents to guide my viewer's eye to see those rocks, see them jump out, but uh, not to overpower them with crunchy contrast everywhere. So you get the idea. I can finish painting all the way through there. That's how I built up that mask. Let me paste back what I had started with. Paste. And so now before a dynamic contrast in the masking and after. It's a subtler effect, but the rocks are standing out more. I've kept the water a little bit more detail there, but still soft and smooth, which it was. From here, uh, I did decide I wanted a little more color in the sky. So we'll see. We added a color enhancer. We'll open that up. I just chose the sky preset and the only customization was adding a mask and it was a masking bug. And so I just made a nice large feather on a gradient bug and the color is being applied in full up to, well, let's press the O key, up to about here and then tapering off. I only masked away about 60% of it here. If I did a full clean cut of 100% removal from the bottom, it wouldn't look as natural, right? If the sky has these purplish, pinkish tones, they're going to be thrown back down to the land as well. I just didn't want it to uh, overpower and make the whole scene become, you know, richer blue or so forth. I spent all that time in Lightroom getting that aquas nice. I just wanted that blue touch up in here. And so we can see that the before and after of that, that makes the sky a little, a little richer, especially right above that, uh, that large marine layer they had there. And I'm still keeping that aqua tone in the water. The final step was adding a vignette. I'll turn that on. And uh, this is straight stuff. Uh, if you've seen any of my other videos, it's, you know, take the feather all the way down to zero. I decided to offset the center a little bit. And once I get the, the position of the vignette happy, feather it back out, play with the size. The only little tiny addition I did was a bit of masking on the vignette to remove it from this foreground rock. O key once again. And oh, I missed a little spot, but that's okay. <laughs> so you can see that I did some masking here. Let me turn the mask mode to red so we can see it in context. I just removed the vignette from this area. And what the, why did I do that? Well, 
from the viewer's perspective, this is like the platform that they're standing on to view the scene. I didn't want that platform to be dark. I wanted it to be kind of the, the same light tones as the center of my photo here. So now when I do the vignette, um, let me copy that mask and then I'll reset it just for a moment. So reset. You see that rock gets a little dimmer? And let me undo that. Just that, it's in another subtle touch, but just that little bit there is, is raising up uh, the, the brightness of that and meaning it's gonna stand out to our viewer. And especially since this is the place where at least I envision someone would be standing when they're looking at this scene. Um, putting aside the fact I know that's where I was standing <laughs> when I was looking at this scene, but it, it helps our viewer out. So that's the sum of it. So uh, this is the before coming into effects, and then this is after. For the tip of the week, I guess I'd say it has to be the luminosity mask, but not just using a luminosity mask, recognizing that you don't have to take it at face value. You can brush away areas or accentuate it. Inverting it is, is an obvious thing. At least I think it's obvious. But uh, the point is you can do more with, it with your luminosity mask. Adding it is one thing, but then tailoring it to suit your needs is another. I could have thrown a, a gradient on it too if I wanted to completely remove it from the sky. And you saw that we did some painting there to minimize the amount of the uh, effect was going on to so the water, but doing it in a way that was still um, honoring the differences in bright tones and dark tones in a nice, smooth, gradual way. So luminosity masks are cool, and you don't have to take them at face value. And that's going to wrap it up for this week in post. I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you did, let me know somehow. Always love hearing from everyone. So please send in your questions and uh, social shares are always appreciated. Until next time, my name is Scott Davenport. Happy shooting. So uh, I tell you, that's a pretty good tip. I can, uh, what am I trying to say here? That sucked. I got to do that again.